Hello, everyone. Sorry, technical difficulty there on my end, pressing the wrong buttons. Well, I want to welcome you to today's student stream. I am Stephen Torres, faculty director here at Career Launch. Uh, excited about another student stream. And today, of course, I am with Sean O'Keefe. I'm the founder, partner, and chief impact officer at Career Launch. Um, we're bringing this to you as a way to supplement our, our mission of working with colleges and career programs to scale the skill set of uh, teaching students um, a holistic and proactive uh, internship or job search, especially for students with few to no connections. I'm really glad to have you here, Philip. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, we have a really special guest today, a rising senior in college who is an international student. And I think for those of you out there who might be international students also, you're gonna get some really good information from Philip about how he was able to leverage this career launch method and some of the teachings uh, to, to help him uh, as he navigates this process. So again, Philip, thank you so much for being here. We're here. By the way, I didn't say his full name, Philip Orr. Thank you so much for being here today, Philip. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So uh, awesome. First of all, let, let's get into uh, how you found out about uh, the career launch method there at Santa Clara. How did you find out about it? You, I, I think it was your first year that you started hearing about it. Tell, tell us about this. Yeah, I came into Santa Clara University. Um, I haven't known about this program before, but uh, I'm part of LEAD, which is the first generation college student organization at Santa Clara University. And for that, I uh, met Professor O'Keefe. Um, basically there was a workshop that was talking about how to land an internship and, and essentially boost your career and, and trying to get the dream job. And I instantly yeah. got interested in that. Um, and that was like a lead workshop that I, that I uh, participated in. So in the first yeah. year right away, I, I got to um, meet Professor O'Keefe. And then in my sophomore year, I took uh, a class also focused in a lead on uh, that, that we use this method there as well. And then in the junior year, I took a class that was different, but I, I, I used the approach again. So it, nice. I, I've used it ever since first year and I can be more happy. So, so you, you definitely have some experience. Let's, let's back up a little bit. Um, so where are you from? Well, I'm from Slovakia, a small country in the middle of uh, Europe. Um, yeah, used to be Czechoslovakia. Um, a lot of interesting uh, things around beautiful nature, a lot of uh, really um, ambitious people and uh, yeah I don't know <laughs> what else to say yeah now I, I want to ask you this and because I, I think it's really relevant um, <clears throat> did you growing up uh, as an international student or someone in Slovakia did you always want to come to the US for school yeah I've been talking to uh, my parents and family about this uh, ever since and even before maybe I kind of realized it in my in my mind. Uh, we've been mm -hmm. talking about this ever since because we knew that uh, in the US there's quality education that I really wanted to uh, try to try to get their university. And even though I know, knew it was a challenge from all perspectives, mm -hmm. I knew that it's somewhere where I can engage. I can actually um, use the opportunities, meet people, uh, networking, which is also part of this method uh, that mm -hmm. I truly enjoy. And I'm happy that uh, it worked out after all. So yeah. Okay. So, so you, you knew kind of growing up that you wanted to come to the U.S. Um, and how did you, uh, if I may ask, how did you end up at Santa Clara? That's a good question. Uh, I've, I've, I was doing my research, of course. Uh, I knew some universities before, uh, and I was doing also some other research, whether through all sorts of blogs from people that I knew. Of course, it's not very typical in, in Slovakia and generally in Europe for students to um, go and study in the U.S., uh, so I knew some people who did happen to study, some Slovak uh, students. And um, I, about Santa Clara, I, I did some research and I and I and my focus was that I wanted to study business uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, I kind of was tweaking <clears throat> into, into venture capital as well. But when I saw Santa Clara being in, in, in um, Silicon Valley and offering a great business program, it was definitely uh, the top choice for me. And I thought that this is a great opportunity where not only I can get the good academics, quality academics, but I can also use it in practice um, and apply it. Yeah, and, and I, I think for a lot of you out there who are watching this, I, I want you to understand kind of what Philip was going through, right? He, he grew up knowing that he wanted to come here for education, but there was also this I that Philip just mentioned that, hey, you know, I'm going to university because, you know, there's something going to be beyond that, right? And Philip, you, you mentioned venture capital. 
um, and being in Silicon Valley. So that was a big, big thing. Um, I want to ask this before you, you know, went through this program with Sean, um, how much about like warm networking, cold networking, reaching out to people, how much of that were you familiar with back in Slovakia? To some extent, I would say I was familiar, um, but mm -hmm. not, I would say, to this sort of um, uh, vast expansion. I would say I, I didn't know there's so many uh, possibilities. I didn't know I could maybe leverage it, as you mentioned. Um, I think that's the big part of it, where um, I was already networking. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it, I, I really enjoyed it when it was natural, and but I didn't realize at some point that career-wise, there is a certain aspect to it, especially when I'm in college, which is like the crucial part of your life uh, towards your kind of first steps in career, um, that there are these methods where I'm able to pretty much contact people that I might not be normally able to uh, contact. Yeah. And so I was, I was familiar with it, like you mentioned, but not as much probably to the cold networking part, which in one way it was adrenaline. At the same time, I think it was, <laughs> it was amazing and on point, like right in the moment. You know, and, and Sean, I, I want to bring you in on this because we've talked about this on the student stream before, um, but Philip is actually a really good example of how a lot of students are, right? They're aware that they there is this networking aspect, that they probably should be doing something, yet they don't have the skills to be able to le really leverage everything, right? And that's what the career launch method does right is it, it gives the the actual skills to take someone like philip who knows that yeah i probably should be doing this to the actual okay here's how you do it right could you expand on that yeah and, and i think it's because to do it right is very comprehensive there, there, there's a lot of micro steps so the career launch method is eight steps sounds simple but there's there's actually um many, many micro steps that need to be taken to optimize um, the success of building relationships from scratch. Um, and there are, you know, students might pick up something from a, from a, something they see on YouTube or, a, you know, a blog that they read and, and you can get helpful pointers here and there. And, and I've had a lot of students uh, share this, um, but, but a lot of times that's only, a, a small part of the equation. And, and so the career launch method is comprehensive. It's, it's, it, you know, we really took the time to scaffold to use a higher ed term and, and provide a step by step by step breakdown of, of, of all the little things that need to be done um, prior to reaching out to someone. Um, re and then the process of reaching out to someone, when you do reach out to someone and you actually get to, have a meeting or a conversation with someone, how do you execute that extremely well so that it determines it, uh, turns into something more? Um, how do you make small talk? How do you plan your questions strategically? How do you finish a conversation strongly um, to cultivate next steps? Um, what are the things that you should do in your follow-up? Of course, you should send an email within 24 hours, but there's three or four more things that you should do over the next one to three months to truly build a relationship. Like So there's all these micro steps, if you will, um, to do, to do it really well and really effective. Um, that I think that's kind of what Phillips alluding to is, 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 is learning something that's comprehensive, um, so that it maximizes your chances of success. Yeah. And Philip, so let's, let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about as you first, the first time you were exposed to the information, I know you've picked up things along the way, but the first time you were learning some of these things, what was going through your mind as a student as you were learning this stuff? Can you remember anything like that? Yeah, definitely. So as I mentioned before, I, at first I, I got really excited and I got almost this kind of adrenaline, but in a way also with responsibility because I'm talking with people who have busy schedules and there's a lot of, uh, I would say, tactics or strategies in a, in a good sense uh, where Professor O'Keefe has explained that um, you know, for instance, you know, I was thinking um, he, he said this uh, thing where if I try to target someone maybe higher up the uh, organization and in, in the organization or higher in the structure, per, the paradox is they might be actually more inclining towards finding the time because they've already kind of uh, achieved a certain 
uh, career they want and they find the time to bring back the value to the community and to the students who want to learn and actually you know everybody likes to meet and talk about what they have done and maybe help another person and so what, what was going through my mind is you know like like you mentioned venture capital or i'm also engaged in sales this is kind of getting the foot in the door and i thought this is amazing because i get to not to sound opportunistic but you get to a point where you basically get to talk about their career and understand actually whether this is some field that you might be interested in, in the future through a career conversation which gives you an idea of what their day looks like what they do um, how they got into it just like venture capital it's not a typical career the career paths uh, to venture capital are you know really different and nobody really knows how how if, if there's a specific route like maybe in other areas and at the same time you have a potential opportunity to actually present yourself in a way where maybe your dream internship or dream job could be at that organization and at that moment i told myself okay this is perfect i and i'm super glad that i i've met i've met professor o'keefe and i've had the chance to try this approach in the first year and actually then try to get it better and and train it, train it essentially uh, how to communicate with people and, and leverage you more so that by the end of uh, my college, college career, I can actually also tell myself that I've tried in several interviews and maybe also just as they say in school, you want to try several activities, several, um, not only extracurricular, but academia wise as well, so that you know what you want to do in the future. And um, to me, that seemed like a great opportunity, especially out, like I said, outside academia, which I think is is equally important, if if not sometimes even more than than the academics itself. Yeah. So so let's let's talk about then as you started engaging with this. Um, you go through the 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 first program. You're you're making your discernment list, right? And. Uh, you said that you it was a little counterintuitive to talk to someone higher up or reach out to someone when you first started reaching out and making some of those uh emails or phone calls what was going through your mind i mean were you sitting there going okay i'm you know an international student reaching out to like these executives or high powerful people uh what the hell <laughs> yeah exactly that was that was sort of sort of what was going through my mind and and not to sound negative or skeptical but while i was writing the email and then perhaps telling the professor o'keefe about what is the status i was uh i was quite skeptical and i was like yeah sure they'll they'll respond you know i you know i'm not too sure about it but i i had this hope that hopefully you know the data is clear uh it has been tried before so i'm, I'm gonna believe it and once I was uh, when once I was sending the emails and, and I was trying to get in, in phone calls, I it took some time and and it was kind of just about this diligence and discipline to try to get to that point. But at the end, I did actually get to a point where I got you know interviews with uh, top VCs uh, in Silicon Valley that I never even thought that it would be possible. I just suddenly got an email: oh, the assistant is going to refer to you back when when they're free, or with an executive. Um, in San Francisco, and suddenly I was on the train writing some questions for the uh, for the given conversation to go well. So, you know, of course, you have to believe the process, and you have to believe in yourself. Um, you want the conversation to be really well thought, and whether it is the actual area or the person that you're interested in talking to, for whichever reason, whether to understand the career, uh, it it is possible. It is possible, and even if you have doubts in your mind and the adrenaline in a positive or negative way. I think that drives you to go further. And once you get that first email, um, you will you will understand. <laughs> yeah, and, and Sean, so I want to talk about this from the you know instructor perspective, especially for those out there who might be coming into the career launch program as an administrator. Uh, when students, you know, students at first might be skeptical, right? And they're like, is this really going to work? And I think what they're really saying is not, is this going to work, but is this going to work for me? Right? That's, that's what they want. Is, is this really going to work? And, and that was Philip, right? Yeah, I, this is going to work for me. If I reach out to these top tier VCs, someone's going to actually respond back to me, right? And so could you talk a little bit about that at, from an administrator perspective that, hey, this process, it works right the process works we have data 10 years of data backing this up speak speak a little bit to that from the administrative perspective yeah well it's easy now right 10 <laughs> 11 years later um and having not only the data that but the stories with real names and real companies or real nonprofits that 
re real research positions. I mean, we had a student uh, last week. Uh, I mean, this we have students every week using the method and landing amazing opportunities because of it. A student at Amherst College, first generation student, um, wanted something this summer, didn't have anything lined up, didn't want to get something in corporate, but wanted a research position. It was also an international student from Nigeria um, and reached out, used the career launch method, I contacted um, an alumni that he was interested in learning more about their research. That alumni worked at Columbia University. The conversation went well, and by the end of the conversation, he was offered a summer paid um, research position. Um, and so, you know, I believed in it 11 years ago because I had done it. Um, but 11 years ago, I didn't have the data that we have now and all this, all the cool stories that we, you know, cultivate more and more every week that goes by. Um, but even back then is um, the very, very first class I ever taught, I didn't, I, I wasn't positive that it was going to work. But seeing it work for so many students in the very first class in 2010 um, and knowing my own experience and, and just having this belief that it wasn't because of my gender or my skin color or my major or anything about me. It was just the fact that I was a student, even my age. Like at, at some point I, I was wondering, hey, will this work for older students um, or students in graduate schools? And we, so at this point, we know that this works despite your major despite your age, despite, you know, any characteristics, um, as long as you're a student, this works. It's, you know, that's, that's why we call it playing the student card because um, you're leveraging the fact that society likes to help students a lot more than they like to help non-students. Although <laughs> the, the recent college grad card works too. Um, and so, so it, it, it even works after you're done being a student. Um, but it's yeah at this, at this point going back to your question um having having 11 years of data and then having all the stories it's um uh students feel a lot more comfortable now um to to, to say you know what i have some doubts but i'm pretty sure i i can i can trust the data and and the methodology all every you know when students learn about the methodology they go wow this is this is this is this makes a lot of sense and yeah. um and that's and, and that that's why you know so many students are able to step out of their comfort zone. Yeah, you know, and, and I think, you know, Philip, to, to your point, you know, uh, there's a lot of students just like that. And and uh, I think especially as an international student, right, where you're you're kind of a foreigner thinking, will this actually work for me here? And I think for those other international students out there, you have to listen to Philip, like, this will work for you. That absolutely will work. And what I love about it, Philip, is as you go through the process, you end up facing what we call the terror barrier, right? That is that barrier where you're like, do I actually hit send now, right? Or the barrier where you're like, okay, I'm about, you put in the number and you're about to make the call uh, for whether it's your, your actual in-person or whatever, you're like, ah. Or the, the, the 15 minutes as you arrive before you know the in-person um, career conversation and you're like I'm about to walk in and talk to this person and you're writing down the questions making sure you're prepared that is the tear barrier talk a little bit about what it's like facing that and then what it's like reflecting looking back on that for for someone who's gone through it recently a hundred a hundred percent I I exactly remember that moment it was probably at each call or each email almost, especially when it was, I knew that it was hard to get uh, to, to contact the person. Um, at first, of course, you deal with it because you get a lot of calls where you have to dial a code and you're talking to some machine, basically. You don't perhaps even get to a real person. And then so suddenly when someone picks up, you're suddenly almost so stressed and so scared because you haven't heard anyone for the last 10 minutes that you were waiting on the phone, waiting for a real person to pick up. Yeah. Um, so and and the same with email even though there's no uh, uh face contact uh but beyond like like professor o'keefe mentioned the follow-up email the next morning not using a scheduled program just simply sending it manually in the given morning shows that you are willing to to do, go the extra mile and i think this is important to highlight is going that extra mile and at the end of the day i think you might have mentioned it probably somewhere is that of course, there's nothing to lose in a way. Uh, that's what I always told myself, you know, what is the worst that can go? Um, I'll try my best, maybe at that given moment, I'm not able to, but at least I'll try to go that extra mile and try to try to uh, 
schedule that uh, conversation, talk to the person, because at the end of the day, I don't want to uh, hinder it down, but in a way the student doesn't have any reputation. It's almost like a clean slate and you can only build upon that. So at that given moment, um, you basically can only grow. There's only so many yeah. opportunities and why not, why not leverage that opportunity? I, that is so important. I, I hope every student out there and, and every international student as well listens to what Philip just said. So I want to talk a little bit of transition here. So you've gone through this process now and you've been able to leverage it. Let's talk about how it's actually worked for you. Uh, could you share with us maybe some of the things that you were able to, to you know, actually have work out that, that helped you along your particular journey? Definitely. Yeah, I've, I've tried to follow up uh, with most uh, or all of the networking uh, contacts. Of course, uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it happens that the conversation then uh, slowly fades away, but then you come back uh, to the person, try to follow up. This is something I would definitely highlight also to try to stay in touch with the person. So it's not like you come for the conversation or you discuss with the person and then that's all. It's it's really good to cultivate the, the, uh, the, the contact and, and right. network further. Um, I've, I've been in touch with, uh, with quite a few and I think I remember it because right now I'm of course, uh, the first, so I'm rising senior, but I've been using it also outside of career, whether it was also mm. for potential partnerships in business. So not only for internship, that was my main focus before. Um, I've also received, uh, referrals for, um, internships that I, I was going to the conversation and, uh, sometimes it can happen to be not as maybe, um, kind of happily and friendly because they're very being professional, which is good because at the end I find I suddenly found out that they were referring me to an internship. And, and at the at the point when I was in the discussion, I maybe didn't even think that the person was impressed or um, uh, felt good about what we were talking about. Uh, so yes, I've I've received some references. I've also got uh, some offers before uh, that once I graduate, for instance, I would they would reach out to me and I should stay in touch. Um, so I, yeah, I have a positive experiences only. Yeah. And, and so I, I want everybody to, to really hear what Philip just said, because this is crucial. Yes, this program, this process works for getting internships, but the, the, the process also works outside of this. I, I mean, some of the skills that you pick up um, as far as building relationships, being able to contact people, cultivating that kind of long-term value-based relationship is really born through this process, Philip, isn't it? Yes, 100%, 100%. And I think, and I think just as Professor O'Keefe and you've mentioned, um, cultivating that relationship is maybe, or not maybe, 100%, <laughs> it's uh, more even important than the given maybe conversation or discussion in that given moment. Because I'm not going to put away the first impression. First impression is everything. And you can really set the tone for the next years in the, in the given uh, relationship anyhow. But at the end of the day, there's only so many people that will reach out and there's only so many people out of those people that will actually uh, cultivate back and have a yeah. real, real meaningful conversation and, and be in touch. That's awesome. So as we wrap up here, Sean, I'd love to get any final thoughts, you know, hearing Philip's story, um, you know, coming here, uh, all those type of things that, that you could share with our audience. Yeah, it's just that this is life changing stuff. Um, and we, we've seen it year after year now. Um, you know, I, I hope anyone that's watching, um, you know, you know, take, starts taking action. Um, because life is more than about what you know it's also about who you who, who you know who knows you and what they think about you um the career launch method um you know is is just a, is a powerful tool it can help you with exploring career options it can help you de develop internal advocates for jobs that you're applying to online and it can help you land internships and jobs in the hidden job market and and on top of all that we see that it helps students increase their self-confidence it builds their courage um and it 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 and it, um, it flows over as Philip said into other areas of life, and it's something that will stick with you um, and show up in, in life in in decades ahead. Um, it's really really powerful. And, you know, it changed my life. That's why that's that's why we're here. Um, I had someone that you know showed me, or you know, multiple people that showed me um, you know some things in this area that I cobbled together and then crafted the career launch method and. Um, I just I wish every student at every 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 high school every college um, would have the opportunity 
um, to go through this. And, and if, if anyone's watching who's who's out of college, um, you can still apply these concepts. Um, and it just yeah. it just it can open a lot of doors, and it, it's really really rewarding. That's fantastic, Philip. Any last thoughts that you would like to share? with anyone out there, whether they're a student here in the U.S. or possibly an international student coming to the U.S. like you were, um, any things that you would like to share about uh, the career launch method? Definitely. I, I would maybe just include to what Professor O'Keefe said, um, just looking for, from a perspective of how today's world is very competitive. And so if we look at how the competitive landscape of whether candidates or students is leveled, let's say, because we have great universities, we have uh, access to knowledge, um, and, and great education, you there are factors and ways that you can distinguish yourself naturally, of course. And I think this approach and method is one of the ways where you can stand out um, and you can actually tr show your true persona. And so all I, all I would say, and especially to students, international students, but to anyone, is just there is nothing to lose. Um, there's essentially just things you can gain and it's all about putting that door, uh, foot in the door. Uh, whether and, and, and I'm talking about any area. I, I remember having classmates in different areas. And so I know in my case, VC and sales might be very uh, strictly kind of easy to focus this method to, but I think there's any kind of area that you can actually adapt this to. And you, you'll, you'll wonder on how many um, achievements you can uh, receive and how successful you can be in this. That's fantastic. And for all of you out there, uh, hopefully you can take one of our classes through one of our career centers at your university. If they don't have it, make sure you, you ask them about it. Um, also, next month, publicly, officially, we'll be launching the uh, Launch Your Career book. Uh, you can actually go right now and get two free chapters, two complimentary chapters at launchyourcareerbook.com slash preview. Uh, you can check those out. Um, of course, it'll be available at Amazon uh, and uh, at the launchyourcareerbook.com site, along with a companion workbook, uh, if that's something that you are interested in. But definitely check it out. I want to thank Philip. Of course, thank you, Sean, for being here today, sharing this information with all of you out there. And we'll see you next week in our next student stream. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Philip. Thank you once again for having me. Great to see you. Bye-bye. Thanks.